Hi guys. Look, um, I haven't posted in a long time, so I figured I'll show you what I've been doing for the last several weeks. I've been working more too, but that's aside the point. That uh, I've been playing a lot of two hour one life. I've gotten into it and I used to be into it when I one hour one life came out a long time ago. So I wanted to make a quick quick little tutorials on some key things that I've noticed get overlooked sometimes so what we're gonna do is gonna get reborn what I did was I went and looked for a seed that was empty of people it didn't have any neighbors oh I am using a mod I'm gonna quickly because this is just for you guys to learn and when you play two hour one life and you can do this I made a little road here for me to remember where I was you can hit the you can hit the enter key and type in no BB like you just saw that way you can play solo speaking of which I need to name myself there we go Oop. hidden behind a thing let's eat the banana oh. and it shows my name you solo and what you want to do when you're looking for a seed is you go I have the mod on so when you have the mod on you just go to my, uh, the settings button and you type in numbers, letters, whatever you want it to be, something that you can remember, so it will remember it for you. Here we go. I scouted around, like I said, beforehand to make sure that I'm not disturbing anybody. And I like this seed because it is a little bit of a walk, but there's milkweed palooza and fruit trees, there's cotton, there's plenty of plants and stuff. And I have a little friend over here. Their biome locked, so he'll be here. As you see, there's two wells in the green biome. You can live anywhere you want in any biome you want. The reason I like to live in green biomes, like the grass and the flower biome, is because it um, it's enemy free. It's not dangerous. <laughs> the first thing you want to do when you're soloing is get you some, I uh, get you a basket. And I also checked when I looked around to make sure that I have access to other biomes, which is important to me. And there's a mine very, very close by. Don't worry if you're going slow, especially when you start, because with two hours one life, you have quite a long time to establish yourself the first go around. And with this, the way that the seeds work, you can always come back to it whenever you're ready to play it. The only thing you might have to worry about somebody might steal some stuff or borrow some stuff which is another reason why i looked around for no neighbors we want to work on our yum chain so if you've noticed i ate a banana i ate some gooseberries i'm eating this i'm not eating the same things i'm trying to keep a variety because as you eat you'll see the yum here and it gives you a bonus so i have all these what are called pips and I have plus eight beyond that before it goes down completely. And I'm craving a drilled coconut. If I can manage to find a coconut, that would be wonderful. I try not to touch the fruit trees too terribly much. You have to have at least one fruit on there for you to get a clipping of it. What I'm doing is I'm looking for a coconut. Those are spawned in the desert biome, which I, I know there's one around, I just don't know where. There's so many seals in this one little area. And that's wonderful because they yield the best clothing. Oh my god, there's even a precious... That... It took me almost three lives to find that before. And there's one there. So not much in the way of coconuts. I don't think we're going to get one. I can snag a wild pepper. And get out quickly. As you see, like I was saying, there's a mod. Um, and it, I have it on because one, it allows me to see how old I am. To see how much longer I have to do um, a video in a certain lifetime. And two, because... It lets me see where enemies are, so I don't just unexpectedly die. <laughs> Let's see. Have I eaten a wild carrot? I have not. Good. Now, if you notice early on, I may or may not have hit that my home marker. You want to hit a home marker if you find a place you like right away. Even though I have these coordinates up here, those are where I spawned. Here's my home marker. It led me straight back to it second thing you want to do we're gonna take that out right quick and I'm gonna go eat a gooseberry <laughs> even though I've already eaten one before I just don't trust not to starve and then we're gonna go and pick 
these milkweed, they go through three transitional stages. They go through the plain, the flowered one like this, and then the one where you can actually get the fruits from it. Like that, that's what they look like. You can plant those and have a milkweed farm going, but I don't typically do that because sheep are a much better resource. Even cotton is a better resource. So <clears throat> there's the plain side ones. Like I said, this place had so much milkweed. I, I couldn't pass it up. I was so hopeful I didn't have a neighbor and I didn't, thankfully. This one, and they will despawn the plants that you leave behind, not the strain. That would be horrible. So you don't have to worry about them messing up an idea that you might have later down the line for a build or a farm or something like that. I have so many fruit trees around. I'm starving. Here. Just to work up my yum so I can show you guys a few things. Okay, so we have three of them. I'm going to go back to my home marker and I'm going to lay them out. Now there's a few things that you want first off. You need this. Here's one. And this is a hatchet. What that is going to allow you to do is make one of the most important items in the game, tender. We'll come back to that later. I need to collect more stones and I gotta find a big rock. Big rock, big rock. Here we go. Take the round boy, smack him. We're gonna go back over here because I saw the next thing that we needed is this guy right here. This little thing in the ground is flint. If you smack it with a sharp stone, you get little flint chips. And you need that for the next thing you're gonna have to have. So we're gonna go look for a very specific tree one like this. This is what you want out of them. Those long straight branches. And you're going to take your sharp stone again. Smack, smack. Get your flint chip. And make a flint knife. Because you can't do anything with the sharp stones anymore. Or not the sharp stones, the flint. Just the flint chips. Alright. So we're starting to get all of this together. It is good to prep, so I'll be back. I'm just going to get a few more of these guys. Now, milkweed is only found in these green biomes. They're crucial when you first start, because if you don't have these, you're going to have a very, very hard time starting your camp. And I'm putting them together in a row because I can carry more of them in a basket. And using the flint knife, I can disassemble them into strings again, which is important. Oh, I'm so lucky. I okay, have apples, oranges, and lemons in the same biome. Okay, I can't carry any more. I'm going back to the base and I'm going to show you the next tool that you want to make. There's two more tools that are essential when you start a camp and you guessed it. We need more of these guys. I need one of these, one of these, and I will show you the next thing you want to make. It's called a fire bow drill. So you hit the curved branch from the Lombard Poplar tree once. Hit a straight branch twice. Use the string on that one to make the fire bow drill. I need to figure out where I want to set up like my kiln, my kitchen, and stuff like that. What am I taking that for? I need one more straight branch. See one down here. And I'm sorry I keep zooming in and out. I want you to see the process of what I'm doing, but I also want to see where I'm going. So the next tool you're going to need Okay, so you're familiar with that. We're going to get one more time and we made stakes. We're going to take a rope and we just made a rabbit snare, which is important. That's the next thing you need. Comes the scary part for a lot of people. Where do I want to make my kiln? The scary part is, you know, heading out and getting rabbits. And it can be. Because you don't know, you know, where you're going, what you're doing. You're heading, striking out from the base. But when you're first starting, especially if you're doing it by yourself and you don't have kids, you don't have to worry about them um, draining the close resources to keep themselves alive. Sharp stones, you can make, you can keep making sharp stones. So you can leave him behind. You can always come back and pick him up later. This always takes a moment. I feel so bad. 
the noise doesn't help that the rabbit makes. Pick the rabbit. Pick that. If you noticed, I went... Like I said, I explored first before I ran out. Which prompted the rabbits to spawn. And it gave them time to have little babies. You never ever want to hit a hole that's in a rabbit family hole. Because then it can take forever for the rabbits to respawn. So I'm going to put him in here. And then I'm going to go do this. And I'm going to remember which way from my home marker here I went. So I can come back and get the other rabbits. I have what I want for now. So I'm heading right back home. It's going to be very scary at first. Because especially if you get really hungry and you start hearing the guitar strums. It's, it's a little unnerving because you think it's imminent. And using my flint knife, I skinned my rabbits. So, I need four pieces. I need one cut, one whole cut rabbit first. Sorry, it was a wild hiccup. I'm going to take this guy. And use him to skewer this. Then I'm going to go... I need another big long... There we go. So we want to have one long straight shaft. Yes, I know I'm hungry. So what I'm doing is just to stay alive. You never really actually want to do this. Just so I can teach you guys without the distraction of the guitar strings. So, we're going to go and look for Tinder. Doink. And these guys are stackable as are. Yes. I'm hungry. We're going to take care of that in just a moment with the rabbit. So what I'm doing, I'm making tinder because we're going to make a fire. What you need to make a fire is you got to find a juniper tree. That's the easiest way to do it. Grab its tinder. Or, oh, I'm sorry, it's... What is it called? Grab a leaf. So I use the bow on the shaft. I'm grabbing the fire with the leaf. And then lighting the juniper tender with it and dropping the leaf and I'm going to put that on there. You are kidding me. I, I'm so... My character's really cold, so I have to survive until the tender dies down to coals. So now that the fire died, we can cook the rabbit. You never want to do that beforehand because you will burn the rabbit too crisp and you won't be able to use it. So I had two, I am going to eat two, and, well I'm not going to eat two, I'm going to eat one. So I dropped it and I'm right clicking it to get a bone. Thankfully they changed the mechanics so you can only get one bone from it because I had camps that were literally littered with rabbit bone needles. I used my flint knife, made the bone needle, and now I'm going to use my flint knife on the rope. I don't want to do that. I'm going to take one of these strings to the bone needle and then I'm taking it to that. You're going to need this and it's not for water. If you open the crafting guide it will tell you it's for water. It's not. It's for bellows. I haven't decided where I'm going to put my forge and stuff yet so I'm not going to make my bellows. But what I am going to do, since I did snag an extra rabbit, I'm going to make myself decent. <laughs> there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sharp stone and I'm heading back out for rabbits. Because there is a very... Where did I go? Where did I go? I went over here, didn't I? Here we are. That's why you always want to mark the location of your home marker. It was very handy having that extra rabbit and just being able to clothe myself a little bit. It will slow my hunger down. It will keep me from getting as hungry as fast. And the reason you want to go back out before you do anything else is because getting a backpack is going to really increase your carrying capacity. And that will come in massively handy. There is another way to do it. You can make a reed backpack, which is basically the same way I made this. And you just get one more extra 
um, bundle of reeds and a rope and you tie it together and it gives you some extra carrying capacity but I don't like to do that because it wastes it's a waste of rope to me because those backpacks decay rather quickly I would rather just straight up have a backpack yeah I'm gonna show you that you do stop and eat eating is it's an ongoing thing when you first start out never ending I'm gonna put this guy down and we're gonna repeat the process that you saw a minute ago. But we're not gonna cook the rabbits this time. Instead, we're gonna pile the fur up. We want four fur. Oh, here we go. And a cut piece of fur. Because you want these two guys. So I just right click to separate them. Taking my sharp stone back with me. And the whole reason I'm making this tutorial is because I w wanted to show Someone that was a partner Eve of mine. I wanted to show a partner Eve of mine how to go through things step by step because he had said that he, it was it was kind of overwhelming because there's so much and that's very true. It can be very overwhelming very quickly, not knowing what to do, where to start, or how to help. So I'm back where my rabbits were. I'm gonna take this guy. This guy. I'm actually okay enough on food, or I can leave one behind. I'm just gonna eat him. I might as well. There we go. And two more rabbits. See, when I hovered over that, it just said rabbit hole. I don't want to trap those. I want them to have a baby because I want to keep grabbing rabbits. I'm gonna pick my rabbits up, going back home, and we're gonna repeat the process. I'll see you there. Right click, drop in my basket. I'm gonna put the rabbits here. Set my round boy out. Take my flint knife. We need one more rabbit, which is why I trapped the other one. I gotta go find it again. I'll see you guys back here. I will make the backpack. So I got my extra rabbit there again, which is fine. But we just want one more skin. Always stay tidy. Because if it becomes a mess, it becomes hard to navigate around and get what you want quickly. Which, when you're always starving, getting around quickly is pretty essential. So I put four rabbit furs together and I split that stack in two by right clicking. And there's a backpack. Ta-da! Now we instantly have four more carrying slots. Alright. I'm going to eat this other rabbit that I snagged. And I'm going to skin this guy while I'm here. I'm going to leave this guy behind because there's plenty of sharp stones near. Woo! It was close! It was scary. So I'm going to trap some rabbits in this savanna biome. So this time after catching the rabbits, I've got a few. I'm bringing the snare back with me because I have a horrible sense of direction. The only thing I did not get lucky with is the horses. I didn't get any horses. <laughs> All right. So we're going to lay these guys out. I'm setting my snare here. No, I'm not. I'm setting my sharp boy. I don't want to set my sharp boy down. I want the snare down. And we're going to cut all these furs. So remember how I showed you guys that four pieces and then the cut pieces make the backpack. We're going to put four pieces together. You can do this with three pieces too. It makes a different top, but this one is more efficient. Right. setting these down here. Cleaning up my mess. I'll be back. I have to go get some more string. So I'm taking my string, two pieces of fur, and I've got a hat. So the only thing I don't have is my shoes and all that takes is two cut pieces and some string. This is massive improvement because if you watch my temperature gauge, um, the backpack doesn't count for that, but you see my temperature gauge is going down. 
the colder or hotter you are, the more it takes to food for you to regulate your body temperature or stay alive. So the you want it close to this little bar right here. And for starting, minus the shoes, this is the best that you can do. That is it for the very beginning of the tutorial. The next one I'm going to show you guys part two of setting up your base camp. And that is setting up a kiln and the forge and working your way towards food. Thanks. I hope you guys found this helpful. And I'll see you again. Bye.